Good evening. Thank you for letting us interrupt your Sunday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern. So it's time now for Sneak Speak. I'm here with my good friend and the director, the the big wig over at IPMNation.com, Matt Connerton. Matt, good evening. How are you, sir? Good evening to you. How are you? Well, you know, I'm counting down the days. What is it? It's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, my math skills haven't left me Thursday, so five. So, like, I'm six days from going under the Dremel tool. So I'm going to put it really hard into this week and then uh, probably kick back uh, for a few days and try to heal. But other than that, I'm doing great. How about you? I'm uh, doing pretty well. No, no Dremels here, so I'm, I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some blowback from people around me. They go, "Are you really going to get your shunt in a baggie?" When I go, yeah, you're Are damn you? right. Yeah, I've already talked to my doctor. I'm going to duct tape it to my gown or my kilt, whatever it is they roll you in. We could probably ask our guest tonight a little something about that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to have a little baggie with my name on it. He goes, hey, if I don't forget, I'll wheel it right out of you and drop it right in a baggie. So wow. then, like, you I didn't know, know you could do that. Isn't you, it? Yeah, isn't I'm that thinking something? It though. Isn't, it, isn't that a song like? Uh, if I could put a shunt in a baggie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barbara Streisand will be calling any minute. She could be on line three during the show. Uh, she wants to. Uh, yeah, she wants to do the title. But, you know, it makes me think of, like, some of those old country western bars you go into, and there's, like, a jar on the counter up behind the bar of pickled pig's feet. Yes. Yeah. Well, this would be my shunt in formaldehyde. <laughs> right? so people go, well, why not? What the hell is that? <laughs> they go, yeah, that's my shunt. I go, yeah, that part right there rode, you know, was the incubus in my brain for the last, uh, what now, Matt, going on two years? Has it been that long? It's wow. Been that long. And you know what's so funny, brother? I went in last week and said to the doctor, oh, well, you know, I was here a year ago. I was here last December telling you it wasn't working. And he goes, oh, well, you know, given some of the headaches, literally, some of the, some of the uh, shortcomings you've had over the last year, we think maybe it was malfunctioning. Oh, 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 you do, do you? Right. So my opinion a year ago saying, my God, pull this thing out of me. It's malfunctioning. That wasn't good enough. Right. You had to basically oh. torture me for a year. But so that in any event, right. that's what I'm up to this week. So I'm excited. Uh, come, uh, I don't know, some kind of pre-op stuff I have to do Wednesday. And then Friday morning, uh, the alien is out of me. I'll no longer be a cyborg by about uh, this time Friday night, I'm hoping. Um, which I'm bummed because I did kind of like claiming to be a cyborg. Sure, yeah, sure. You know, I'm, re- I'm reminded of, uh, I don't know if you ever uh, were into Star Trek The Next Generation, but I'm suddenly reminded when Patrick, uh, uh, well, Patrick Stewart, who played, uh, of course, uh, Captain Picard, when he, he had been captured by the Borg and assimilated, <laughs> and then uh, they got him back from the Borg, and then he, uh, you know, he had to have all the tubing taken out of him. Wow, really? I didn't know about that. Yes. See, I'm a little older than you, I guess, because my memory, uh, as it pertains to something like this, with Star Trek, is uh, Ricardo Montalban. You know, when you get over the fine Corinthian leather, when you get over tattoo saying, the plane, the plane, uh, he was the one that dropped that little worm or something, wasn't he, into somebody's ear, and then it ended up eating out through his chest or his something or other? Do you remember that? Something like that, yeah. yeah. So it was quite horrifying. That was Star Trek Two: Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan. Was that Wrath of Khan? Maybe I'm not old. Yeah. Maybe I'm not old. All right, Matt. Enough about me. Why don't we go ahead and before we get into this week's all the cool things that are coming? Because I know you. I I think you have an announcement to make as well as a new show uh, that's coming to IPM Nation. Why don't you introduce our guest uh, and we can get into it and then we'll save towards the bottom of the hour for the big breaking news of uh, one of the yeah. other people joining us on IPM Nation. So Matt, take it away. Yes, well, joining us via phone, uh, a gentleman whom I've known for uh, a long time now and I have a long association with, uh, uh, and uh, uh, very, very uh, proud of that. Uh, he's uh, not only you know someone we've done a lot of work together, but I also uh, count him among one of my closest friends. Wow. Uh, the effervescent Dr. <laughs> Kevin. Dr. Kevin, how are you? Welcome, sir. Hello, hello, hello. It was Chekhov's brain that that worm went into. Oh, thank you. That uh, made him uh, be subservient to the wrath of Khan. And um, yeah. the reason why they made you suffer for the extra year is, uh, you know, when you're talking about MDs, especially the ones that qualify as minor deities, um, <laughs> if, you know, if, if, you should, if you should question, then they torture. Yes. Um, you know, because... No altar is supposed to be riddled with questions. Yes. Um, 
So I just want you to understand what happened. Well, right. let me, Kevin, Dr. Kevin, thank you. I should have contacted you a year ago. Let me tell you, it's caused me <laughs> to be estranged from certain members of my extended family who are all medical doctors, uh, because when I mentioned that MD stands for minor deity, Actually, I think I was nicer than you. I called it Meshuggah deity. You know, like it's like a uh -huh. Norse god and Loki or something like that. Uh, a Meshuggah <laughs> a deity. I think they unfriended me on Facebook and you know all the rest of that. So uh, there's no no worry about me uh, saying any of that anymore because they're not listening. <laughs> you know I mean? Oh well, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, you know, there you go. I, know, on, I love on, it. On, on my shows, I always talk about that. Uh, but my viewers need to understand you have two kinds of MDs. You have minor deities and you have managing directors. Okay. And the managing directors are in the minor, uh, minority, mm -hmm. but that you only ever want to work with a managing director who says, tell me what you want out of your health care. Tell me who you want involved. Sure. Tell me how you would like to see this go. And that's the good MD. That's the good managing director who doesn't think they are the be-all and the end-all. Well, Dr. Kevin, let me ask you this, and then Matt, you can start in with, uh, you know, in terms of uh, Dr. Kevin's show and how everyone can tune in. But it, it, for me, where does your gut play into it, Dr. Kevin? Like, I knew last December when, uh, you know, I popped smoke and finally ended up in the hospital, I knew this thing was malfunctioning. I knew something was wrong. I mean, you know, running around with a cantaloupe size swelling coming out of the back of my head, I knew something was up. And they go, oh, no, 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 it's postoperative fluid. And I go, how long does post-operative fluid stick around? What is it, number one? And number two, how long does it stick around? So when does our gut instinct, right, if you can find not a minor deity but a managing director, when would you suggest that you allow your gut instinct or, or you know, your feeling of what's going on to be able to say, Doc, I need you to listen to this and, and kind of take my opinion into account because they didn't. Right, and it led me to a year of, of being tortured, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, well, it should start at the very beginning. Okay. If you have a gut that you talk to, and I just want to make sure that I make this clear because I'm in front of your listening audience and my listening audience hears me say all this all the time. Um, I am not, uh, you know, I am not a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't diagnose, I can't prescribe. And any and all information I receive is actually intuitive in nature because I, I work as a medical intuitive. Ooh. So, so asking me, when do you listen to your gut? A better question is, when should you not listen to your gut? That's a great you have question. Right. That's about it. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I just fly, I found myself flipping coins anymore. Like the bad guy in Batman, and if it, if the coin comes up, then I do a, a certain action. If the coin ends up tails, I do another action. But I I love that. So Matt, why don't you go ahead and and uh, I want to hear more about your friendship with Dr. Kevin that you all have known each other, and uh, give me an idea of how much uh, how excited you are to have him here on IPM Nation. Well, yeah, Dr. Kevin uh, is is practically an IPM Nation original. I mean, he's been. Uh, we've been carrying his content on IPM Nation for, I mean, it's been at least a decade, right, Dr. Kevin? Wow. Over a decade, yep. Over a decade. When yep. did it? And I've, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was, I'm almost positive I, you started um, carrying me, you weren't my main station, but you, did um, I can't think of the word right now, but I, I came to your station. I'm pretty sure it was in the first year you had IPM Nation. Wow. I think so. Oh. I think so. Because I've been on air for 13 years, going on to 14 years now. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you're right. I, I think, uh, I think you, were, uh, you were there pretty close to the beginning. And we met because I was... Uh, at the time, I was the co-host of uh, Norm Moody on uh, a show that at the time was called Norm Psychic World, and you were a frequent guest on there, and that's uh, that's how you and I met. Absolutely. Yeah. We met through Norm, um, and we immediately recognized each, or, each other's slightly sarcastic and often <laughs> sardonic wit. Oh, sardonic. <laughs> that's a nice blend. A good word. Uh, it is. I like that. 
Yes, yes. So, Ke- Dr. Kevin, if you course, would... Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Matt. Oh, no, go, go, go ahead, Brian. No, I was just going to ask about, like, the time slot, when do... You know, he's got a great sense of humor and a medical intuitive. I think he could do a lot of help for folks. What's the... Catch me up on the time slot, how often, where can we find him, that kind of thing. Yeah, Dr. Kevin... Uh, the, the Dr. Kevin Show is on Thursdays on uh, IPM Nation 2, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, he's also on Own Times Radio, uh, but you know, but syndicates the show to IPMNation.com, so we carry Very it cool. at the same time. And uh, yeah, Thursdays uh, live at 6 p.m. Eastern, and actually the first Thursday of every month, I join Dr. Kevin live uh, from 6 to 7, plus I uh, occasionally uh, guest host for him, too, as I did recently. Oh, very but, nice. Um, Sorry, what? I was going to say, that's very nice that you can guest host for him. Yes, yes. Um, yep. And we should also mention, too, we have uh, Dr. Kevin TV, Ooh. which is a 24 uh, 7 streaming channel that runs uh, at ipmnation.com slash DR Kevin TV. Or, or I think we called it Dr. Kevin and Friends, actually. And uh, yes, yeah, Dr. Kevin and Friends, I'm looking at it now. Because uh, Dr. Kevin has a lot of uh, television content uh, going back many, many years. Uh, So if you watch it long enough, you can see uh, Dr. Kevin at various phases of his life. (laughs) 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 Going back quite a bit. (laughs) Very cool. So, yeah. Dr. Kevin, if I can ask you, what is something that you hope your viewers, or I suspect in doing it over a decade now, you know your viewers, what are some of the things that they come away with? What is, like, for someone that may not know of your programming, what would you like them to know about what you do? The thing that's most important for me to do is to empower people to upgrade their critical thinking skills. Hmm. I, you know, I've had several formats. There was a period, Brian, where I had shows five days a week. There was mm-hmm. a time I was on CBS radio. I've, I've bought all over the place with my stuff. And in my current show, I usually bring one guest on, which okay. we should have you come on sometime, Brian. We were going to have you on way back when you first got involved with Matt, and then you had that inconvenient health issue of yours. I don't know what you were thinking. Um, (laughs) Probably wasn't, brother. (laughs) That's the whole thing. Um, But but we'd love to have you on the show at some point. And I I put my – I try to find, or I do find, a a wide variety. Nobody ever knows what my guest is going – who my guest is going to be from a – they're not all just spiritual. I have business. I did a whole wow. series of people that were young, successful entrepreneurs under 25. I've done a death and dying series. I've, uh, you name it. Wow. I've had all sorts of different people. And all I do is I invite them to answer a few questions. Okay. They get the questions in advance so they can be ready for it. Um, and then I either support or challenge their questions. And I get to be my viewer's mouthpiece for meeting very interesting people and expanding their awareness. Wow. And, you know, it's, so it's all about, I, I never know who I'm going to meet. And I will tell you, I have been told, I've had many guests say, best show I've ever done. I've never felt like I could so much be myself and, so promoted, and I have other people who absolutely hate my show that would never come on, and I've had people I've thrown off in the middle of my show because they won't stop being an ongoing sales pitch. They sure. won't give me content. They won't give me things that are value to my listener. And I've said to people on air, if you try to sell this one more time, I'm throwing you off the show because yeah. that's not what we agreed to. And it's, you know, even so much so, and you guys have been doing this a lot longer than I have, it's, it's in addition to trying to sell content, you ever ask a question and it's like, I don't know how these, these people can probably skin dive without a, a breathing apparatus because they'll go to answer a question 
and their answer will be 17 minutes long. And you can't find a way of breaking in and sounding polite. Like, they don't even take – like, it's a digeridoo. Like, they can keep talking by circulating air in through their nose, back out through the mouth, and they, they never give you a pause. So I can just imagine that's got to be a pain. Well, you know, and I, I will tell people, you know, make sure you give me a chance to read uh, to – um, ask questions. I'll sure. uh, remind people before we go on air that if they go on too long, they're actually going to lose the listener. Sure. Because the listener needs to have the interruption in order to process, to, sure. to think about stuff. Um, and then I never promise to be polite. Good for you, brother. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Can you take a breath for a second, yeah. please? Yeah. Hold, 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 hold on. See, Dr. Kevin, I don't know if you know, but I literally have a gong. It's a real gong. Like, when people come to the studio, they go, is that a real gong? I go, yeah. I can hit it any time I want. So if people <laughs> go too long, then I'll just smack the gong and uh, go, oh, well, the gong says you got to go. Right? Because I, I'm not as polite as you all. I don't know how else to do it. But I'm fascinated by this. So so people can call in, but you take – you give uh, your guest questions in advance – I'd love to be a yeah. guest, but I got to tell you, I got a laundry list of crap wrong with me, right? The brain tumor was the least of my worries. People say to me all the time, what's wrong with you? And I go, you don't have the time or the wherewithal to go over that list, right? So, but yeah. I would love, maybe you could do like a 1700 part series where I come on <laughs> once a week for the next 20 years <laughs> and you could kind of help me out. So we might think of uh, doing something like that. Well, I think I, I like your optimism <laughs> that with all the things going wrong, yeah. that you're that you know you're going to be alive for the next twenty years. Oh, right. Um, and then your lack of reality check yeah. that if we were at going at it for twenty years, yeah. um, I'm sure I would kill you before that. Well, yeah, I'm sure you would too. Well, uh, so you have met my <laughs> wife. You, you have met my wife. Well, here's the thing, Dr. Kevin, I'll tell you. For years, well, two years, actually, I can't say more than that, I used to be able to say, I've never met a doctor that says, oh, you have a brain shunt. That tax 20 years on your life. Never met one, right? They always said, ah, oh, well, it's going to be kind of tough. But now that they're getting ready to yank this thing out of me, you know, hopefully it won't be like fishing and you leave the lure, right, because you snap mm. the line. But hopefully they get it all out of me. So then what are they going to say to me? Well, maybe I'm back on track to live to be 100. You never know, right? Yeah. Never can yeah. tell. Yeah. So I'm looking you forward know, to it. That'd be great. Uh, you know, and, and now I'm going to chime in with my spiritual perspective, which is, you know, unless you make some really big, stupid free will choices, right. you're going to live until your soul decides it's done with this lifetime. Yep. And nothing ticks me off more than um, uh, somebody in any kind of medicine, but especially Western medicine, giving me my life sentence. Right. Um, and telling me right. how much longer I have to live. And so I return the favor by continually irritating them by making sure I make them look like fools. Oh, oh, boy, I, don't, I know it. And I have this saying, it's kind of the, something similar, but I say to people all the time, uh, I'm bulletproof until the divine decides otherwise. I'm bulletproof till the divine decides, no, you're no longer bulletproof, checks up, call for the tab, right? So it gives me a pretty good outlook on life because I figure if I'm here, I wake up in the morning, I'm going to get another run at the table and I'm going to keep running at it until the divine decides, yeah, you're out. So I, okay. I, I can't think of any other way to do it, given everything that's Ryan, happened to me. Yes, sir. How, how I like that, yes, sir. How um, how long are you open? How long are you up in the morning before you do your first look in the mirror? Oh, my friend, I have to tell you because, as Matt will tell you, I now believe, being a former television reporter, I have a face for radio. You know, being born with a hair lip, and now I have more scars from these tumors than Frankenstein. I tend not to get to the mirror unless it's a reflection of like a storefront till about one or two in the afternoon. Right. I even try to brush my teeth with my eyes closed because I go, oh, and people say, oh, well, I didn't even recognize the hair lip. But for me, the hair lip, the scar, I look like Mikhail Gorbachev uh, with this scar now coming down the front of my head. I got cancer scars. I got them all. So I tend not to look in the mirror unless I'm absolutely forced to. But that's probably not the answer you wanted to hear. Well, no, not, no <laughs> I, I didn't have an answer that I wanted to hear, Brian. Um, 
you know, I just was wondering how late in the day that when you do look in the mirror, the divine that's looking back at you tells you whether you're going to make it to the end of the day or not. That's a great question. I've never thought about looking into it and waiting for the answer. I just go, in this particular moment, in this instant, in all of time, Yellowstone at 40 below zero, Death Valley at 140-some-odd degrees, the Everglades, any of the cool things that I've ever had a chance to do, I just keep putting one step, you know, one foot in front of the other, and at the moment that I'm no longer bulletproof, I'll know because I will have checked out of here. And... well. There isn't and, that one-on-one communication. And the divine is looking back at you in the mirror, right? You get that. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay, good. Because you were making it sound like it was somebody else's choice, and I just wanted to do a reality check here. Yeah, no, I, but I get so much fun out of saying I now have a face for radio. You know what I mean? It's just... <clears throat> I, I know those lines. I love uh, them. I have a uh, few of my own. That's a blast. You hold on to them. You cuddle yeah. into them. Yeah. And they're fun the first 1,500 times. 1,500 times, right? Little thin. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> not in my book all right matt so i'm loving this i can't wait to be on dr kevin's show he's got a great energy i don't know why i expected you to be i don't know what i expected but i would love to hang out with you uh that sounds great uh, so matt give me a, a, a story if you will uh before we get to the bottom of the out of here a story of someone that's interacted with dr kevin and you've watched in amazement or otherwise at what that interaction meant for the listener Oh, wow. Interesting. You know, I, I remember years ago, I, again, this was back in the very early days of IPM Nation when we used to, believe it or not, Brian, and I'm sure Dr. Kevin remembers this vividly, we used to broadcast out of a hair salon Ooh. on Elm Street here in Manchester with some very, very cheap equipment. Uh, but I was, you know, I, I was doing uh, hypnotherapy out of this uh, hair salon called Styling Souls. Mm -hmm. right here in Manchester, and at night we would actually broadcast from there. And I don't know if you remember this, Dr. Kevin, but uh, you, you came there one Sunday night when we were broadcasting, and um, there was a particular show that we used to have on Sunday nights, and I'm going to – the initials of the title were B.E. I'm not going to say the full name of the show for our – because we try to keep this kind of PG. <laughs> but, uh, but, Dr. Kevin, you, you came and, and you uh, – uh, talked at length with um, on the show uh, live with one of the hosts, uh, Dan Ramblett, and, and kind of helped him with uh, some stuff that he was going through live on the air. And it was very, um, it was very interesting, and it was uh, definitely a departure from what we would normally do on that program. But I think he really helped uh, Dan and, and helped him feel a lot better that night and kind of changed his outlook. And I don't expect you to remember it in any detail because – you know, obviously, you've seen Lord knows how many thousands and thousands of clients and different people you've helped, but but uh, but it's something that I saw right in front of me that I'll always remember seeing you get to in real time, really kind of help somebody work through some some issues. Very cool. Yeah, I remember the salon, and I remember going there a couple of different times, and I remember having an intense conversation. But I didn't store it in my headspace, um, yeah. Necessarily, but you know, this is one of my oddities. If he came in tomorrow and sat across from me within the first five to seven minutes and started talking to me, I would recall almost enough of it to be able to pick it right up and move it forward. Sure, I, sure. I will have. You know, I have clients that. I might not talk to you for years, and within the first five or six minutes, they're like, oh, my God, how do you remember that? And I said, well, because you needed me to. So that's that's pretty cool. I thought, but you needed me to. So I did. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's an excellent answer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, Brian, would you like to hear the questions I put my, my guest through? Because you're going to go through them. Yes, I have a pen. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I have a pen, and I have a blank 3 by 5 card with your name. I have Dr. K, but you get where I'm going. Uh, I'm ready. Yes, sir. So, uh, so I, this is the format of the show, and you get and you'll get this in an email because okay. we'll email and set up Ooh. a date. The first part of the show, you call in. Okay. You just stay quiet as okay. I do my hot topic. Okay. Hot topic either gets me hot under the collar or warms the cockles of my heart. Very nice. <laughs> then I introduce you, and we discuss the topic. So your very first interaction is for my, my listeners to hear you express an opinion, a thought, or an idea. And 
at that moment they know, do I want to stay in and is this an interesting man or is this an idiot and can I go do something else? Then well, that's after a great that, idea. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> I ask you, where do you want to take my listeners outside the box? I don't care what it is. I don't care what subject. I could be anything in the world. Where do you want to stretch their comfort zone? Okay. Then the next question is, we discussed that for a while. We never know where it's going to go. And then where do you want to take them behind the curtain? Expose them to a truth that has been misrepresented, has been greatly misrepresented in your, in your humble opinion. Sure. All right, I and got then it. The, then the last question for the show, mm-hmm. and everybody, with, with some rare exceptions, everybody gets these questions and they mm-hmm. know it ahead of time. Sure. Is, uh, and then the last section, which I used to do a whole weekly show, one of my, when I do five days a week, this is one whole show I used to do, mm-hmm. which is, what a load of crap with Dr. Kevin. What <laughs> load of crap do you think going on in the world? Throw it on the table and we're going to kick it around. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I and like that. I had, I had a PR agent once who had contacted me about um, getting some of his authors booked on my show. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, that's fine. I said, but let me tell you the format. I said, because you can't send me 20 questions to ask them. You can't tell me what the parameters of the conversation is going to be. Sure. They get the same questions everybody else does. And I went through the whole show with him, and he said, yeah, I don't think I have anybody bright enough to be on your show. I'd be <laughs> nervous. But when I get one that is, I'll get back to you. That was like three years ago. I was going to say, I haven't, heard from, to I haven't heard from him since, have you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because they, they prep them all. Sure. Here are the questions. Practice your answers. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You're going to be okay. Yep. He's like, oh, God, we're not going to put him on the Dr. Kevin show. Yeah, he was riding like there ain't no clown, right? Where's the safety net? Yeah. I got gotcha. you. All right, guys. Well, as I knew would happen, we're going to get ready to run. This is a 30-minute gig. Dr. Kevin, thank you so very much. I'm looking forward to trading emails and figuring out when you can get me into the queue next. So thank you for joining us. Matt, Some uh, you got like 90 seconds for some closing thoughts. What do we got going on at IPM Nation? And I teased you got a big announcement, so why don't we go with that? Yeah, let's hit that uh, quickly. Uh, beginning tomorrow night, every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, on IPM Nation 2, uh, we have a new show called Dumb and Busted. Ooh. And uh, the description actually sums it up well, the, the description they have online. Every week we bring you true crime stories of insane stupidity and exceptional genius. <laughs> uh, it's hosted by uh, these two comedians, uh, one of whom, Allison Coughlin, is going to be joining us on January 13th here oh, on IPM Nation Sneak Speak. But uh, it's, it's a very, very funny show. Uh, there are 38 episodes in, so it's okay. not a brand new show, but we just picked it up. Um, so you can hear the newest episode every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on IPM Nation 2. And then weeknights at midnight on IPM Nation 2, uh, you can hear previous episodes. We're going to run those because, they're, you know, they're sort of evergreen. Sure. And, uh, Brian, uh, you being ex-law enforcement, you might find this show uh, particularly entertaining. Uh, being, you know, it, it being this uh, this topic, it's it's true crime, but it's hilarious. It's very, very funny, and I recommend it. And uh, that starts this week. So it starts this IPA Monday. Nation. It starts this coming. Oh, it starts tomorrow on the tenth. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. that'd be great. I'll I'll leave you with this thought, gentlemen, real quick. I made a burglar arrest one time. Burglar climbed through, climbed up onto the second story, got in through an unlocked screen uh, window. Right, climbed in, but while he was busy doing it, his wallet fell out. <laughs> so gets in with the burglar, he steals all the crap, goes, and I come in. The homeowner goes, I don't know if this helps, but I found this in the room, and it was the guy's wallet, his driver's license, and everything else. Oh wow! Had <laughs> fallen out, had clipped the top of the window, and fallen out. <laughs> no, great. never been there. Never. I don't know what you're talking about. Never been to that address. Oh. Okay, so yeah, there, I'm sure I, I could uh, listen, and it'll take me back down memory lane. All right, Dr. Kevin, no thank you so very much for your time. I super appreciate it, and I look forward to learning from you, sir, and being on your show. Matt, as always, thank you for the opportunity to be here on IPM Nation. We'll look forward to tomorrow night being the launch, uh, and then we'll be back next Sunday night. Matt, I don't know if you get a chance to watch the video. I actually figured out while we were talking how to load uh, your card. 
the the, the visual yes, here. So thank we'll see. You. Well, don't thank me. Yet. Let's let's wait and see if it worked. But we're out of here. Thank you so very much for joining us here at Sneak Speak, and we're looking forward to welcoming you to a full week, three different stations here at IPMNation.com. But we're looking forward to welcoming you to some programming that you're just not going to get anywhere else. Thank you so very much for joining us. Have a fantastic evening. I'll be back in about 30 minutes with Sunday version of All Natural Being. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.